talk about uh, something concerning a very basic topic. It's the cube of long integers. This is a joint work with my friend and colleague, Marco Bodrato. Actually, uh, the thing to do is uh, quite old. Uh, you have uh, a long integer, u, and uh, you want to compute uh, its third power, u of the cube, when u has many digits, let's say many. This is the definition, you can find it even on Wikipedia. And uh, actually, the algorithm 2, that is square and multiply, is uh, what everyone uses. <laughs> And it's better because there's a square, and one can first square because squaring is more efficient than just multiplying. The main result of this paper is that this square and multiply algorithm is not always the best way, the fastest way, the optimal way <coughs> to compute the cube. So at last we have something new after five or six thousand years. Then there are some consequences that we try to extend some way this result to uh, the computation of generic powers of a long mean, or in general to something that grows. And everything is based on the divide et impera uh, paradigm. If uh, u has many digits, we consider it is low and half, high half, a0 and a1, let's say with uh, n and t digits in whatever base you like, this 2, this 2 to the 32, uh, and whatever. Then the first step is to square, then we compute u to the square. Then we have the square of a binomial, a0 square, a1 square, and then we have the double product. Okay, we have to shift and to sum uh, what we obtain. Therefore, uh, we have two squares, two s, and a multiplication of uh, numbers with n digits. But this can be done uh, slightly more efficiently using Karatsuba algorithm, the first subquadratic multiplication algorithm, uh, in which, in the square case, the product is substituted with the, this expression, which introduces, um, let's say, more linear operations, but has another, another square. Therefore, we have three squares to compute u square. And then we have to compute the product, square and product. Therefore, we have here u square, <coughs> indicated by a prime and b prime, which is the result of what we have uh, above, and then u again. Uh, we use uh, the unbalanced Tom Cook multiplication method uh, Tom Cook 3 method, which I will describe uh, uh, in a minute. And um, with this method, it is possible to compute the product using just five multiplication, and then also some other additions, subtractions, shiftings, uh, and so on. So the final complexity in this case is uh, three squares and five multiplication. This is the state of the art currently. Uh, just a few words about this subquadratic multiplication method, the Tom Cook K methods, or Tom K for short. Uh, actually, there are an infinite families of subquadratic uh, multiplication methods. The balanced case uh, is uh, quite historical and considers uh, uh, polynomials. The, the original version is to multiply two polynomials with, with equal degrees. Uh, and uh, recently, also, different degrees version was uh, proposed. Uh, the, the greater k is, the more efficient the method is, even uh, if the overhead, the linear overhead of the method. And the very core of this method is just the evaluate, recursively multiply, then interpolate paradigm. Therefore, you have two polynomials, a and b, uh, evaluate them in a sufficient number of points, therefore, uh, you, have, you obtain some way a pseudo van der Monde matrix. Then you compute the evaluation of the products by computing the products of the evaluations. This is a recursive step. And then finally you interpolate the values you obtain to obtain all the coefficients of the result. Then you have to recompose, to shift and sum in order to obtain the, the final integer. But this is the, the very core of the method. And there are some degrees of freedom. You may choose uh, the interpolation points you prefer. 
uh, you may invert the matrix uh, using the shortest inversion sequence. And it is possible also to mix uh, some way the interpolation phase and the final recomposition by saving and recycling some computation. There have been many optimizations on this by Zugas, Zimmerman, Granlund, Müller, and other guys. Uh, in our case, therefore, we have, uh, if you remember before, uh, a four-piece, so to say, because when you square, you double the dimension, therefore we have a, a polynomial A of X with of degree, degree 3 times U, B represents U. Therefore, using the core uh, Tom Cook algorithm um, that I showed before, evaluating in these five points where infinite means uh, compute A3 times uh, B1, the X, uh, so to say, and interpolating, we can obtain the five coefficients of the result. You see the first and the last one have just one piece, uh, which are A0, B0, and A3, B1. The other have two pieces, two advents, and I put them vertically in order to indicate their summing. So you have to sum and to shift and so on. So nothing mysterious about this. The new cube algorithm we propose has a square less. Yeah, therefore, we have two squares and always five multiplication instead of three squares and five multiplication. This is the, what, what we have to compute, the cube function. Yeah, all formulas are quite easy, therefore uh, I hope that everyone can get them. Uh, this is the usual cube formula. But uh, uh, the first idea is to consider a slightly different polynomial, g of f x, which just has a 9 more in the constant term. Okay, this appears almost by miracle, it was a chance. But uh, what does it happen? Uh, if you try to factorize g, uh, well, you can do it very well. Uh, you obtain g1 quadratic polynomial and g2 uh, uh, linear polynomial. And if you look at this formula now, you can guess uh, already the algorithm that uh, it's behind. In fact, uh, one cube, uh, could compute a1 square and uh, a0 square. I remember that multiplication by 3, uh, by 9, by small constants is anyway a linear operation. Therefore, I don't look for it now. Uh, so you have two squares to compute, let's say, g1. Then you multiply, as we, we did before with Tom Cook 3, therefore we still have the five multiplication. We divide the constant coefficient by 9, because we don't want 9 a0 cube, but just a0 cube. And then we recompose the result uh, with the same picture as before, by shifting and summing, summing correspondingly. Uh, in practice, what the idea is this one with the square multiply algorithm. Uh, so in, like in Pascal's triangle, uh, you have two squares and sum and you obtain the coefficient. But in this way, we, you obtain almost the same, same coefficients apart from the 9 uh, in a slightly different way. And that would be wonderful, right? Well, unfortunately, this is not really the case. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And why? Because unbalanced and Tom 3 mixes things up the wrong way. Let's have a closer look. So we have here uh, a1 squared, x squared, therefore it's shifted, and 3a0 squared. Uh, if we, we compute the product with the Tom 3 algorithm and we obtain the <laughs> position of this polynomial, when you, you try to recombine, to recompose them, please have a look at the c0 and c1 coefficients. Uh, we have a 9, but it's, uh, so to say, divided into two coefficients. So we should divide by 9 this and only this part. We can divide by 9 c0, okay, because we, we explicitly have it, so it's no problem. Uh, but how to divide this 9 alone? Because what we have is the, the sum of these two components. We don't have this 9 alone. I put in evidence here the original coefficients of the original cube, cube expansion, which are given after recomposition, not, uh, not in the uh, 
Therefore, uh, let me tell you that uh, this was a very sad moment for me because uh, uh, everything went wrong just because of this bad guy, the, the nine here. And uh, what, 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 what could one do to it? But luckily, another idea came up. We consider a slightly different G of X in which uh, instead, of a 27, uh, instead of a 3, we put a 27 there. Okay? And what does it happen? The new recomposition we have is exactly what we are looking for. Because you see, here we have a 9 as before, but the coefficient here and here, we had a, a, a 9, a, a 3 here if you remember, now change it but change it in the, so to say, correct way. I don't care about this 81. C0 uh, is divisible by everything I want. I divide it by 81. It's a constant. It's a linear operation. So. But now I, I have this wall coefficient, and I can divide it by 9, and I obtain exactly u to the q. So that's work. That's working. Uh, some small consideration. Uh, as I said, the divisions by 9 and 81 are linear operations, so no problem. And uh, actually, the division by 81 can be substituted within a modified version of Tom Cruise 3 algorithm by uh, uh, multiply by 81 and subtract, which is slightly more efficient. And obviously, you have to take care of carries and uh, uh, data going beyond some uh, word limits, and, but that's okay. We make a practical comparison with GMP in some range. Uh, you have here, the, uh, this is a percentual gain. Okay, so GMP is 100%. And this is the new cube algorithm. As you can see, the gain is not too much, but there is some gain. So 4% uh, somewhere here, and uh, maybe less even. We, have, uh, we can have also a, a wider look. So uh, you say that. This is the place where we were before, and you can see there is some other gains, some, also some here, but then here where uh, FFT methods uh, begin to enter the game, and this is no more uh, interesting. So that's it. We have a new algorithm. Uh, maybe it's not uh, uh, something that will change the course of humanity, but actually it proves that the the square and multiply algorithm is not the only way uh, and not always the best way.